is crazy. Oh, I'm gonna be full till tomorrow again. which means it's much colder <laughs> and windier, but we've made it to Jarash. So Jarash is actually the most well-preserved Roman city outside of Italy. I'm currently walking through the bleachers of the ancient Hippodrome, and this is where the Romans would have sat to watch chariot races. It's pretty cool, like this whole town is super well preserved, as opposed to other places where we've been where there's like a Roman ruin here and then there, and like they're just kind of all spread out. Here you can actually see what the entire city would have been like. craziest amphitheater I've ever stood in. I'm just talking so normally and I feel like I'm talking into a microphone. <laughs> I'm like embarrassed at how loud I am right now. <laughs> it's echoing. Warm up your vocal cords. I am. Cords. <clears throat> I'll see you at the top. Okay, if you watched yesterday's video, this is Bell. Try number two. I didn't know you were going to have a band. I know. They were expecting it. Hey. Oh, you're getting fancy now. I thought I had it until you started doing the hopping. Outside of the Pantheon in Rome and Ephesus in Turkey, these have to be the most impressive Roman ruins I've ever seen. And just not something that I would have expected to see so far away from the heart of the Roman Empire. I mean, like, in the old days, it would have taken a long time to get between Rome and here. I just realized that we never really explained how we're getting around this week. I'm sure so far it looks like we've just kind of been teleporting from one place to the other. But because we're here with Nano, she's hooked us up with some of her connections, so we actually have a driver and a tour guide for the entire week which I think should be pretty great because it'll allow us to see more and we'll learn a lot more than we would if we were just running around here on our own. Lunch time! I honestly never thought I would be hungry again after our food tour yesterday. I even skipped breakfast this morning because I was still full. However, it is two o'clock and this girl's hungry. It already smells so good in here. I have no idea where we are. Just bread. Oh, I'm getting hungry about a second. I absolutely love this trip. We are once again having a huge Jordanian feast with all kinds of dishes, family style on the table. Everybody's just grabbing food left and right. Look at this fatouche style. It's like art. Probably the most impressive thing on the table is the fresh bread. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to do it like that. Mm, this is going to be great. Here we go. This whole plate is just full of starters, including fried cheese. Wow. There's no more room on the table. <laughs> I have this bad feeling that this entire plate of meat is for me after the entire table is already full of other dishes that I've been eating for the last 15 minutes. The Jordanians eat really well. Surely they don't do more than one meal a day like this. Even at Thanksgiving, my family's never had this much food on the table. <laughs> and so far since we've been here, we've eaten like this both days. Okay, no one couldn't let a meal go by without a fun experience. So, she has ordered us some raw meat. <laughs> So this is literally just ground raw meat with a creamy garlic sauce on top and some veggies. You drizzle olive oil and eat it with a piece of bread. Raw meat sandwich! I am really expanding my palate. I think it's delicious. The garlic sauce is really strong. And then the meat's just very soft, kind of grainy. It kind of tastes cinnamon in there too. What will we eat next? <laughs> French fry. Seriously, top 10 meals of my life. Everything is incredible. 
<laughs> that is so much food. It's incredible. I don't know if everybody else just eats like a little bite of everything, but I think I just like feel bad, so <laughs> I try to eat it all. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be full till tomorrow again. I will say, we've learned that lunch is a pretty big deal in Jordan and bigger than all the other meals. So I think we're eating more than the average Jordanian, <laughs> but it is normal. We gotta go walk it off now. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to give him my gym to drop. We spent the afternoon exploring a 12th century Muslim castle built on a strategic hilltop, which made for some perfect sunset views. Most importantly, yeah. You wear it like this. It's colder up here. Now you are... Uh... Now I'm Jordanian? Yeah. Well. It is day three in Jordan, and today we packed up our stuff in a mod because we are driving to the Dead Sea. But we have a few stops along the way, the first of which is Mount Nebo, where we have just arrived, and this is where God showed Moses the Promised Land. We drove up about an hour to get here, just up this mountain, and the views are already incredible. And I think because we're getting higher, it's getting colder. Luckily, uh, Nano bought me a traditional Jordanian <laughs> scarf to Isn't keep my neck cute? nice and warm. Apparently, like depending on the color and the pattern of the scarves, you can kind of like tell where people are from. So this red and white pattern is Jordanian, but also there are a lot of Palestinians here. And so like if you see somebody wearing a white and black pattern, then that indicates that they're Palestinian. Pretty much every male is wearing a scarf <laughs> that looks like this. I feel like I'm very much fitting in right now. metal statue that you see behind us signifies the exact spot where they think God showed Moses the promised land. It is absolutely awesome. Standing in the exact spot in a story that we've read a million times in our life. It really just feels completely surreal. You read these stories and it feels like they just like happened in this distant place so far in the past that you can't really relate to it. But then like being here, standing here, seeing everything that we're seeing, it kind of brings all those stories to life. I can see why God chose this spot because the views <laughs> are breathtaking and it's not even a clear day it's super cloudy and we can still see so far i think moses would have been very pleased when he came here <laughs> So this area of Jordan is known for the art of storytelling through mosaics and there's actually a church on top of Mount Nebo with all of these original beautiful mosaic pieces and so they've built this building over it to help preserve it. It is amazing. They're on the walls, they're on the floor. fingers it's probably 40 degrees and very windy and we're supposed to be swimming in the Dead Sea tomorrow but we've heard that it's like 70 degrees down there like that water that we could see from here is warm I'm having a very hard time believing that anything that we could see from here could possibly be warm right now we will see <laughs> it was worth the cold though this is awesome yeah this is incredible probably my favorite thing that we've seen since we've been here yeah our next stop on the agenda is this really awesome town of Majaba. And there's something our guys have been like really trying to make sure we understand, and it's that the Muslims and the Christians in this area 
live in perfect harmony. And a really cool story that he told us is that there was a time when the mosque in town didn't have a way to do their call to prayer. And so the Christians let them use their church bells to do the Muslim call to prayer. That was really cool to hear. So the big thing to see here in Madaba is this church called St. George. It was built over this really unique mosaic map. So the mosaic itself was actually put together in the 6th century, but then it was hidden for thousands of years, and they've just recently found it, and it's helped them understand a lot about the layout of the Holy Land. It is actually extremely fascinating. <laughs> so it's this map of the entire Holy Land with all of these important areas, and when they found it, there was this street on there that nobody knew existed in Jerusalem. And so they went and excavated this street that was like untouched underground. It had been completely built over. It probably just would have gotten lost with time, but this map has allowed them to discover these new things. Yeah. He said the interesting thing about it though is like everything so far that they've like dug into on the map is accurate. But the one thing that's like sticks out on it that's just kind of like weird is that there's a lion on it. So I think yeah. maybe like the climate here used to be different and lions actually used to live here in Jordan. Yeah, because they need more like green land and there's a lot of desert here now. So it's interesting. <laughs> a lot lately it is falalat which means full we are very falalat <laughs> as with every other meal <laughs> One more stop, we are about to be at the Dead Sea, but we've just stopped to see where Jesus was baptized. It actually happened in the Jordan River, which is the border between Jordan and Israel. So it's an area that is highly secure, so we're not supposed to have the camera inside of it, but we're gonna get to see it. We can film right here, but we can only take pictures when we get there. It is cold. I hope the Dead Sea is warmer. Touching history. Yeah. I'm currently standing in Jordan, and that is Israel. Jesus was here, right here, and now we're here. I just can't get over it. It's amazing. Shukran, man. <laughs> Lemonade. Lemonade. Tastes like a Starburst. We got to our new hotel just in time to watch one of the most beautiful sunsets over the Dead Sea. It was seriously perfect. <laughs> I'm so excited to spend the next two nights here. We get to swim in it tomorrow, and it's like a billion degrees warmer. Hence the fact that I took <laughs> both my coats off. <laughs> I'm so excited. So I think we both said swim in the Dead Sea, but I don't think you swim. Float. Float. Relax. I've heard you should not try to swim Rejuvenate. in the Dead Sea, actually. This is how the soldiers stayed fit. This is the CrossFit room. <laughs> they would use these to catapult that people were trying to come up to their castle. what will we eat next, kind of joking, but two seconds later I was handed a piece of fried fat, which I thought might be kind of weird, but it's the best thing ever. I don't even know what animal this came from. <laughs> There's no telling. Sorry, I Ready? <laughs> this is why I can't buy nice sunglasses, because I drop them all the time. 